it's actually here. Okay, folks, where are you? We can hit the lights. We can hit the lights. <laughs> Just checking here. Uh, are my sound people upstairs? How you doing? Can we put a little more middle on this? Just a little. Just a little is too tinny for me. Just a little. Just this is good one. This is good. So this one's good. See, just a little. Just see, this is too tinny. Just a, this is all y'all for a fast sound check. Just a little. Just so this make this the default, please, and get that one. Just a little. Not bad. Uh, oh, good. Uh, it's still too tinny for me. Just a little nice, not bad. Oh, okay, so how many do we have for all? This is four. When I'm calling you, when I'm, I want this one. I want three. I want everything close to how three sounds, because they're all the same kind of mic, right? When I'm good, when, see, see folks, right? When I'm calling you. When I'm calling, okay, good, good. When I'm call, no. <laughs> when I'm call, so let's get number six, because it's, it's like we're in an aluminum foil box. When I'm calling, when, <laughs> Barry White, whenever, whenever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever, see, it's not Barry White. Whenever, whenever, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is number three. Yeah. Is this, that was equal to the same way the other one? Whenever, oh, almost. Yeah. Whenever, when, okay. Whenever, whenever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's gonna work. Whenever, mm -hmm. whenever. <laughs> whenever, ooh. Whenever, whenever, yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is, oh, now I'm sounding tinny. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Lawrence Watts, and I'm a professor here at Berkeley College of Music uh, in the performance studies area, as well as in liberal arts. Uh, and in performance studies, I'm in the voice department where I teach private voice. In the performance studies area, I teach stage performance technique workshop one and two, where we go through the pragmatic aspects of performance as well as looking at some of the technical aspects of performance, like not turning your butt to the audience when you're performing. If you see anybody do that tonight, tell them we ran out of time and I didn't get a chance to tell them, don't turn your butt to the audience. <coughs> um, and I also teach Motown, which is gonna come up after our great opening act. Uh, I love teaching and I love these students. Um, and uh, they've worked semi-hard this semester. <laughs> They'll find out at the end of the show today, I'm certain, gee, if we didn't put a little more time in. <laughs> you know, they'll, know, they'll find that out. Uh, as always, there's always a little wrinkle, uh, and we have to resolve those matters. I'm glad to see we have a nice audience tonight. I appreciate that. So I want you to, in the spirit of the music, uh, to act like a black audience. And a black audience, because there may be a whole lot of black people out there I can't see because the lights are out. But the point is, and I didn't mean that in that way, but that's true too. Um, <coughs> I want you to be able to do what we call in the tradition call and response. 
if you're at a concert where there's urban music, gospel music, black music, and you're just sitting there looking at me, and I'm singing and singing and singing, and you're just looking at me, it means I failed. Because in this music, the audience is another instrument. And so the audience has to give me immediate feedback. All right, mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. That's not rude. Now, I took my mother to a Broadway show written by August Wilson, a black playwright who really chronicles the black experience in the South. I'll never forgive myself for this. My mother's a good Southern girl who grew up uh, in the South, and uh, she's not a woman uh, that has read great literature, but she's a woman of great wisdom and understanding. And we went to see this August Wilson show on Broadway. I got the best tickets in the house. And August Wilson chronicles my mother's life. So everybody in the audience other than my mother and a few others were voyeurs. They were observing and looking at what my mother had lived. And so when the show was going, how many of you have been to a Broadway show? Let me see if you remember it yet. When the show started, my mother said, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and people started to do this. So my mother was laughing and said, oh, no. And she was just having a great time. And people were doing this. And me, Larry Watson, who sees myself as progressive and centered, this was a few years ago, allowed that group, that section, that segment in the audience, because it wasn't the majority of the audience, it was the rich, rich people sitting in front of us who hadn't even paid for their tickets. They probably were comps. Turned to me and looked again, and I said to my mother, shh, I will never get over it. And I shushed my mother. She didn't listen. She <laughs> continued, because she knew her son was confused. Okay, her son had lost his way for about a minute. I had lost my way. But I always remember, I tell that story to people to know that sometimes all of us, no matter how centered we may think we are, how progressive, how innocent, how non-biased we are, we sometimes fall into that abyss of ignorance. And we sometimes allow others, when we pay just as money as they have, to include, to, to control our notions of normalcy. But a real rich society, people make adjustments. They know that when they follow to certain parts of the world, that time has a different context. If you say, I'll meet you in the morning, it may not mean 9 o'clock to 11.30. And you just get over it, or you can be angry, but we're going to still continue to thrive and do what we do as we do it. So I want you tonight to clap. If you don't want to clap, if it's not happening, don't clap, because that's what the audience does you also. If you're singing and playing and nobody, and they say, um, you know you're in trouble. I remember once I was uh, performing in the Marriott in New York, the largest stage in America. They opened up three ballrooms of five, three to five, in this huge stage. And Muhammad Ali and all these fighters in the audience and all kind of singers and everybody. It was a, the off the ash. Why does this mic keep doing this? Because that's why I'm doing this talking just to figure this out before we start. The Arthur Ashe Foundation, Arthur Ashe, for those of you who do not know, was a great tennis player. He died of AIDS, and he did a lot to enlighten the world about AIDS. And so I had been singing. I was the house band, and there came a point where they said, Did you, have you been listening to Larry Watson's band? And people applauded. And then they said, um, why don't we hear something special for him now? And I was waiting for this moment. So I started to sing this arrangement I had done of a Whitney Houston song. And uh, there was a long runway. The runway was so long. The runway was five times this room if we went, one, two, three, at least. So I started to sing, didn't we all know Martha? What's, what's up with this? Before they come out and start singing, why is the mic doing this? Hello? Okay. So, hmm. 
So I started singing, didn't we almost have it all? And I'm walking down the aisle, I'm walking down the aisle. And um, as I do this, oh boy. I think so too. So as I got halfway down the aisle, we were going to the coda of the song. And the band went to the wrong part. Because, see, I tell my students and performers, these are real things. Because we had not taken the time to, in red ink, big bold letters, mark where the coda was so you couldn't miss it. They went to the wrong part of the song. I was way out there in the water. <laughs> way out there on the water. And the audience was looking. Everybody knew something was wrong. And I ended the song. I said, didn't we almost have it all? And nobody applauded. People said. But what was worse, I had to turn around. <laughs> that was the longest walk of my life. Let's get this straight. See this? I'm very clairvoyant. I don't usually talk this much before a concert. But this was my way of double checking, and I'm glad I did. So, I'm gonna ask the band to come out and sing for their instruments. The musicians, sing it, stay where you are. The musicians, come on out. Let's give them a round of applause. Foundations of Singing with Soul is a kind of a gateway uh, uh, class to introduce students to the fundamentals of R&B, soul, gospel, spirituals, all that music that comes out of that uh, whole beginning in Genesis of what we refer to as African American music. And so you're going to hear artists tonight that you may have forgotten or you may never have known these artists. So this show will almost become a show of young artists. I can hear you all while I'm here talking. I can hear you all. See, that's the kind of teacher I am. <laughs> and so you could almost see this as an original music concert because a lot of songs you may not recognize. That forces you to check out the guitar and the drums and the bass and piano and, and check out what they're doing as well as the singing. So I want you to encourage them, I'm very proud of them, uh, as they take you on this journey through some of the richest R&B music and R&B inspired music. So when you hear them do a Barbara Streisand song, don't get shocked, because that was Barbara Streisand was letting them know that she had a little rhythm too. And she could hang if she had to, and she did on many occasions. So without further ado, we're going to start this show. You 
everybody give it up for Jamie, y'all. yourself and talk a little bit about yourself. No, 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 not like that. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Tell me, tell me something about yourself. I, I, I want to know where you learned how to sing like that, my baby. I talk, 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 talk to me. But more importantly, I want you, I want you to talk to me. And tell them, all this you do, you do, you do, you do, you sing, you sing, go ahead and talk to them. Well, my name is Leah Grace, yeah. And I listen to Ella, listen to Sarah, listen to Billy, yeah, yeah. I also listen to a lot of new stuff, too, yeah, like Layla, like Jill. Like Sarah, uh, yeah, I'm a sixth semester. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm on full tuition. Well, 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 yeah, I was a city music, a program that taught me how to be comfortable in situations like this. And that's me, darling. You send me, baby. Darling, you. Darling, you. You send me. Send me, baby. Darling, you. Send me, baby. Send me. Yeah. Whoa. And the song, right? by blues. As a matter of fact, the provost here at Berkeley, I said this day in a faculty meeting and some of the faculty jaws got tight. I said 90 to 95% of the music at Berkeley that is taught comes out of the blues tradition and it's the music that African Americans have contributed to America and to the world. And that is uh, true. And the provost of the institution <laughs> is the chief academic officer. People forget that fact. They forget that, that this music is very fundamentally American. And they forget the great work of Sam Cooke, and they forget the great work of the piece we use in terms of this little different arrangements, the great Rochelle Burrell. Now we're going to move <coughs> to a young woman who has given the world a whole lot of music, and we're gonna play around with that, uh, Christine Aguilera. Yes, because she's included in the tradition. Okay, here we go, band. Come on out, singers. Uh, give them a round of applause.
Jessie Westrich, and I am from Germantown, Maryland. And she's a singer. Now, she also is a dancer, too. She has kept the rhythm going. <laughs> Let's go back into that rhythm again and give them a few steps, OK? Because they used to say in 12th <laughs> century West Africa, if you can't dance, you can't sing. One, two, three, four. <laughs> What? 
everyone. It's been fun this semester. They, they really are extremely talented. And uh, this industry can be so cruel. Tinny, 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 tinny. This, it's, this, uh, but this next song is a classic. And I want to do this, oh boy. I wanted to do this song this semester uh, because it's a great audition song. And it's a song first made popular by the great Stephanie Mills. And this is booming, booming back, baby. And so, tell us, come. <coughs> tell them a little about who you are and where you're from. I'm Chris. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Oh. 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 <coughs> and the thing that's very interesting about you is you knew all of these songs when you arrived here. Tell us how that's the case. You knew most of the repertoire. What did we say backstage about what you need to do when you come out on the stage? Use the microphone properly. <laughs> okay. So when she was here, I couldn't hear her. But when she's here, I still can't hear her. So that means we got to do something with the mic before she starts to sing this lead. This is not cool. This is not cool. So let's see. In the meantime, we'll work on that. You sing to mic number three. You hear that? You hear mic number three? You hear mic number three? Do you hear mic number three? Yes, I do, Larry. Okay, good. There you go. Here we go. Think of the place where there's love overflowing. And I wish I was home, I wish I was back there with the things I've been knowing. And when that makes the tall grass bend into leaning, and suddenly the rain drops that fall, they have a meaning, sprinkling the scene, it makes it all so clean, maybe there's a chance for me to go back, now that I have some direction. Sure be nice to be back home where there's a love and affection. And maybe I can convince time to slow up, but giving me enough time in my life to grow up. Time be my friend. Let But suddenly my world's gone and changed its face But I still know where I'm going And I have had my mind spun around in space And I've watched it grow
The few surprises are sometimes music in school makes it too antiseptic and predictable. We've got to go out on the ledge. Sometimes we make it and sometimes we fall and get wet, but we'll get dry in the morning. So I want my young people not to worry about that. I want them to go out. Let's give Jamie, let's give Jamie a round of applause on the top. song now by Barbara Streisand. <laughs> and Barbara Streisand did this in what movie, folks? The Star is the Born. Star is born. The Real Star is Born. Not another thing that recently came out, but that's another story. And she did this song called <laughs> I Believe in Love.
place to rest my head But I don't want to find myself one day Waking up and looking at Monday Which is what's his name left on Sunday I believe in love what? I believe it nobody sold me Always knew it nobody told me I believe in someone to hold me I believe in love semester student at Berkeley. You know, nobody messes with Barbara Streisand's songs, I'm going to say nobody. Don't. Let's give her another round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where do you hail from? I hail from New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. New Jersey, girl. Very good job. Excellent job. What's next for us? Um, Someone talk about. Huh? Talk ah, about. so we're going to move from one diva from Barbara Streisand to Bonnie Raitt. Is that Billy? Oh, my God. Well, I just have to do it. I don't care. He can get mad if he want. I have to introduce him. We have one of the finest drummers in the country here who, who came to sit in to see part of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Billy Kilson, please stand. Oh, that's not Billy Kilson. That's, that's Dr. Lloyd Sheldon Johnson. That's a good friend of mine. He looks so much like Billy Kilson. You should switch places with me and see this. It was like, I said, damn, Billy's here. Where did Billy come from? Oh, that was funny. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, one of the great educators uh, in this country and a man who <laughs> takes care of people all over the world, Dr. Sh Lloyd Sheldon Johnson. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, <clears throat> so Bonnie Raitt's on. Here we go. Talking about people, I hear them whisper. Uh -huh. You won't believe it. They think we're lovers, stuck undercover. I just ignore it, but they keep saying you laugh just a little too loud, just a little too loud. stand just a little too close, to stare just a little too long. Maybe the scene.
out of these two, they really kicked it out. Tell them where you're from and a little bit about yourself and, and your aspirations. What did I do wrong? You just missed my husband. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm Naomi. I'm from Santa Cruz, California. Um, it's my second semester. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm off to play. Great song. <laughs> My name is Remy Roskin. I'm a third semester, and I'm from Pennsylvania. So, you see what's wonderful is some, we've got such a, a mixture of people, second semester, third semester. I think they're doing pretty good, don't you? I think they've got, I think if you come to Berkeley and you pay $65,000 a year and you know everything, then you're mentally ill. Uh, that really, in fact, this is a laboratory and you should be really testing it all out now. And so I'm glad to see that they're doing that, and uh, and they're doing a good job on it. What's next on our agenda? I just have, I to, just hear have to hear your voice. Ah. Now this song is by one of the great singers and songwriters, Olita Adams. And Olita Adams <coughs> was one of those people who started out singing in nightclubs, uh, singing in hotels. And... Um, one night she was singing as she usually does, getting the gig done. Do you need this one? No, it's just the one. Where it was. Yeah, okay. Remember that, folks. <laughs> Remember what? One, two, three, four, five. They write numerical numbers. And she was numerical numbers. Listen to me. Oh, God. <laughs> so she was singing, and the group Tears for Fears came in and heard her and said, Wow, we want to record with you. Those of us who work in these nightclubs and stuff know that, yeah, right. You're going to make me a star. So she said, yeah, okay, thanks. But two years later, they called her, and they called her to record with them, and she did. Some of you may remember doing the um, Iraq War. She sang a song that became a very important song in America, written by Brenda Russell. She sang a song called Get Here. You can reach me by railway. And she sang that wonderful song, and it captured the heart of America. But now we're going to hear one of her songs, and it's a tearjerker. Uh, and the title of the song is? I just had to hear your voice. Any you ever been in that situation where you know you shouldn't call because there's been some estrangement, but you need that fix, you need that energy? So we're going to do this for you now, and I hope you all enjoy it. spend a little time apart but one night without you is too much for my heart I know I promise not to call sorry but I didn't have a choice I just had to hear your voice I couldn't get to sleep 
I really worry about the future music. And then I hear these young women, and I'm really just thrilled with it. Let's give her another round of applause, as well as all of them. Really great job. Thank you so much. OK, come on back. Here we go. <coughs> One. We're going to now pay tribute to someone we lost this year. We lost a woman who had produced 80 albums or more, the great Nancy Wilson. and. This is one of her most challenging pieces that she recorded. She shares this lead with another great singer. I like for these concerts to also be educational for those who may, students here. Uh, she, um, we're doing this piece that she shared also with Shirley Bassett. And it's a piece called The Greatest Performance of My Life. So we're going to take you on this journey with that. Here it goes. Two. our friends I gave a party and though I had to try to make them think I'd gotten over you and no I saw the unbelieving looks on all their faces I had to try to make them think that it was true. So why? I who hardly danced, danced through the night just like a gypsy. And I, who seldom drink, drank like a fish till I. curtain 
when it fell when all the lights were out and i was all alone you would have seen this actress cry challenging piece of music and I was backstage because what I do the last week is I just kind of disappear upstairs because I won't I'll micromanage and I want to thank Caitlin the musical director right here on piano keyboard because and I want to thank you because that was an incredible rendition let's give her another round of applause but I also I want to now introduce to musicians Jamie that was Pretty good, brother. Tell me about <laughs> yourself and where you from and all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'm from Northern Virginia, and you know uh, this is a genre of music I've been gra gravitating towards for a long period of time now. And then I knew when I r walked into my African diaspora class, as soon as this guy opened his mouth, I knew that like I needed to work and study with him. Well, I appreciate that, but <laughs> Jamie has has really it, he's won my heart with the way he's. Covered. What all Berkeley students should be able to do, if you're going to go to music school, is, is cover different genres of music. Even if you hate it, you need to, to convince us that you're engaged in what you're doing. Let's go into drums now. Yeah. Tell them who you are. Uh, I'm Whit Anderson. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. And Whit was the first student I met this semester when I returned. I, ha I had spent the summer in China, and I came to a class that usually is overpopulated, and there was one student sitting outside, and it was great. <laughs> now, not only was my ego devastated, <laughs> but I was encouraged when I met him, and so I didn't even deal with trying to figure it out. I said, well, you just get into one of my other classes, and I never looked back. I never ke checked on what happened and why that was the case, because I had to calm down. Uh, but later on, I found out the foolishness. But Wit came into this class uh, and has done a great job on drums. Tell us some of the things that you've been challenged and have you've had to work on covering this multiplicity of style. <laughs> well, I would say paying attention to the vocalist the most. That changing my ear to pick the tune that might not make sense. Exactly, and for uh, instrumentalists to know that they must learn the lyrics to the song to be able to understand the cadence and the rhythm. Okay, brother, I didn't see them sneakers. Y'all back up and let the audience see them sneakers. <laughs> that's some, yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> Very good. Tell us your name, so where you're from. Um, yeah, I'm Bram, I'm from Georgia. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. So my, my clairvoyance, my clairvoyance is, I didn't have a bass player for the class. So the voice in my head said, go out in the hall and just stand. So I went up in the hall, and I didn't follow the voice. I sat down. <laughs> and I heard this loud, loud, loud bass player. But I didn't know his bass player. This is talking, talking. And, and so I looked up. I said, he's the one that you sent to me. <laughs> and I said, hi, what do you play? He said, bass. <laughs> and that was, the, that was the beginning of a good friendship and an incredible young man on bass. Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> and then Caitlin. You want to come out here? Woo! Caitlin, this semester, every semester, I choose a student to be the teaching assistant in my classes. And it's all about trying to mentor. And sometimes it's a little rough for all of them because sometimes they may uh, conclude that I'm being abrasive. But I'm being lovingly abrasive in terms of telling them things that one day they may appreciate, but not right now, because you surely will get fired if you don't follow those instructions. And so I'm really pleased with Caitlin. She's done a great job this semester. And Woo! she uh, has had to go between the history class and the performance class. And she has been a trooper. And so let's give her a round of applause. Yeah. So now, what's the next two pieces we're going to do? So in terms of talking about genres, we're going to do an R&B song now uh, by Atlantic.
Morning Star. And we're going to segue from that song into a gospel hit by Tremaine Hawkins. We're going to do it the other way. <laughs> we're going to do it the other way. We're going to start with a, a gospel song by Tremaine Hawkins, who is considered to be one of the greatest gospel singers this country has ever produced. And at one point in her career, she recorded this song, and the church got very upset with her because they felt she had crossed the line. And she didn't cross the line. She obliterated the line <laughs> with this song. And so this became a real dance song in all kind of clubs in America. And so we're going to just uh, go back and do a little bit of it now. And if you feel like standing up and shaking off that ice cream cone you had earlier tonight, please do so. Here we go. <laughs> Girls in your crazy mixed up world, you said you leave them, but you know you won't. Sometimes I think about forgetting you, but it's so, so hard to make that choice. 
Cause boy, with you, I go to seventh heaven just by the sound of your voice. Let's give the instruments a round of applause. Why every time I start to speak in this microphone, it cuts out. Did y'all notice that? Okay. Let's have Motown to get in place. Let's have the Motown band to get in place. Come on, instrumentalists. Come take to your instruments. Circles. Circles. So confused. Is this battery still weak? You might change it for another. Maybe, maybe that's what it. Okay. Um, this year, Donna Ross celebrated 75 years of being on the earth. Uh, she is truly uh, the architect of the pop diva vocalist. Remember the years with the Supremes and all those great hits? They still remain the number one all-girls group in the history of contemporary modern music. Donna Ross departed from the Supremes and went on to be the superstar soloist that she is today. Nominated for an Academy Award for Lady Sings the Blues. Uh, playing two more incredible movies, Mahogany 
and also The Wiz. She was voted by Billboard magazine to be the number one female entertainer of the century. Uh, she's performed in every, every kind of way, jazz, blues, pop, rock. She's done the gamut, and she had five children while she was doing it. And she took those children on the road with her, and those children are now superstars in their own right, all of them. Boy, this mic is pissing me off. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it together. So sh I guess I should, s no, I'm not going to switch mics. So, hmm? hmm? Uh, all right, now we'll get this one pulled up. Uh, and so we're going to do a variety of songs tonight. Uh, I wouldn't dare, the band would get really pissed with me if I pull something out of the ass. I won't do that. But uh, we're proud to be able to um, to bring you this show tonight. Uh, many of these songs are written by some of the incredible songwriters that have molded my life. The great Valerie Simpson, Nick Asher, Valerie Simpson. I hope Miss Valerie Simpson is watching, but I will definitely send her the tape because she wrote most of those incredible hits for Donna Ross. But Donna Ross worked with Nile Rodgers and Holland Dozy and Holland and so many great artists, so many great songwriters. And so we're going to tonight, in paying tribute to her, do some of the songs you'll recognize and others who that were very challenging and usually uh, no one covers them. Donna Ross doesn't do them that often in concert. And one of the marks of a truly legendary artist is when other people don't touch their songs, they don't try to re-record them, they just leave it alone. And that is the case with Donna Ross. You don't hear anybody re-recording Touch Me in the Morning. They just don't touch it. Uh, and so tonight we're going to hear some that you'll be familiar with and others. You hear no one doing Remember Me. You hear nobody uh, doing uh, uh, No One Gets the Prize, which was on her boss album. This is one of the best albums she ever recorded. And so um, she, there was a VH1 special called uh, Divas Pay Tribute to Diana Ross with Mariah Carey and all those people. And I had no shame. I called all over the country. I've never done that before to try to get tickets for the show. And there were no tickets to be gotten. It was a closed industry event. And then the night before, I was the resident artist at the Harvard Law School. And I was asked to come that morning and sing. And I didn't want to do it, but I got out of bed and I went and I sang. And for some reason, that afternoon, I chose that morning, I chose to sing a Negro spiritual, something that I ordinarily would not do, and I did it a cappella. And I sang the song and got a pretty good response. And then my dear friend Charles Ogletree, who's now sick, but we love him, Professor Charles Ogletree, who was the attorney for Anita uh, Hill. He said, ladies and gentlemen, after I got the thing, we have a very special guest in the audience today. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jessie Norman. And Jessie Norman stood up and, and clapped and said to me, good job. Well, I was on cloud nine. For those of you who don't know, we recently just lost Jessie Norman, probably the greatest and one of the greatest American opera singers uh, to ever live. And so I kind of, I kind of floated home that that after that evening floated home just like oh my god jesse norman uh gave me a nods up on singing a, a classical negro spiritual and then i answered my phone call my answer those are days of answer machines and i had a message from one of the backing vocalists for diana ross who knew the sound man for diana ross and they said you have tickets you can come to the show well, I didn't go to sleep that night. I stayed up, took the Amtrak train, went right in and got out. And as I was coming out of the subway, this is again about the clairvoyancy, I was coming out of the subway, this six foot four white guy was walking towards me and I looked up and he looked up and our eyes locked and we had never met. He said, Laddie Watson? I said, yes. He was, the, um, he was her engineer and he just happened to go outside to get some coffee. So he took me in the back entrance with him, and my name was not on the list. There had been some problem where my name was not on the list, but I was with him, and he, uh, they took me in. And I was so nervous because I had 
VIP full entry tickets. But that's why I say to musicians, you get to know what that means. I know what that meant. So I sat in one seat because I didn't want to get anybody in trouble that had got me these tickets. And I had full access. I could have gone any place. And on the bill was Mariah Carey and, and Destiny's Child. And it was everybody. <coughs> so anyway, I took a high school friend with me who we had gone through high school. The, the Supremes in Motown saved our lives. Because we didn't go to root of drugs or gangs. We, we collected albums, which was a very wimpy thing to do. And we would adored the Temptations and the Supremes and all those groups. It showed us another way out of that inner city. So middle ways, when the show was getting ready to start, he said to me, this is his childhood friends. I see some friends of mine, and they say they got a seat closer up. So I'm going to go sit with them. I said, you? I said, okay. So he went up and sat with his friends. <coughs> so then a voice said, about 15 minutes before the show, go up there in that second row and sit in that seat in the second row. And I was like, no. And the voice said, get your ass, get up and go sit. So I got up and I went and I sat in the second seat and the show started and Donna Ross came out. Make a long, long story short. At one point, she went off, she broke protocols. I'm not gonna sing that, I wanna sing something else. And she started to sing another song and she left the stage and she went way up into the balcony singing, and I was sitting here, and then she turned around, and I tell you all the truth, I'm not crazy. There was a beam of light that went from Diana Ross right to my lips. And I was looking, and she started to come down the steps, and then I said, oh my God, she's coming towards me. But I don't know this woman. And she came straight down, straight down, came to me, put the mic under and took my face in her hands and said, I love you, thank you so much, and kissed me. <laughs> now, I was so outdone, I didn't know what to do. Did I dream this? I got home, I had 300 phone calls, must be, from people all, how do you know, did that happen? I said, yeah, it really, and it really did happen just like that. So it was really a moment that I can't remember. I can remember the story, but I can't approximate the actual, it's as if, and then, there are no pictures. There were pictures. They had on VH1, and they took it off. I guess it was some copyright problem. So if any of you got an old tape of that, hook your boy up. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the Motown Review. <laughs>
gotta reach out, show somebody that you care. It ain't good to let the bad news get us out. Let's spread some love around. Maybe we can find an answer if we look into the heart. Love will be the way to for life. Maybe we can find an answer if we look about that behind us. We can learn to fly. Thank you so much. Sit by the telephone whenever you would call me. And when I'm alone in the night, the blues start to fall on me. Baby, I'm waiting for you. And all that's on my mind is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. My friends say I'm crazy and I'm wasting my time on you. I'm breaking the rules and I'm way out of line. It's true, baby, oh, I'm not with you. about is the way that you move me and I'm thinking my lucky stars that you do what you do to me baby the wonder of you is made my wonderful come true Thank you. 
See you around. Didn't I tell you I wouldn't hold you down? Take good care of yourself, you're here. Don't let me hear about you shedding that tea. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. Remember me as a sunny day that you once had along the way. Didn't I inspire? 
to y'all for a second? song so please sing along um, yeah let's go
introduce these incredible players. I'm so proud of them. Tell them who you are and where you're from, because you kick butt tonight. My name is Anna. I'm from DC. My drummers. Hello, I'm Noah. I'm from Central Massachusetts. Yes! Yes! I'm Ben. I'm from Cape Cod. Yes! New England in the house. I'm Juno. Uh, Seoul, I'm from Seoul, South Korea. Yes! Now, I am so proud, because we talked about this a while. Did you hear this, fool? Yeah. Tell them where you are from and tell your name. I'm Sagir. I'm from Israel. Yes! And he put his backbone in there tonight. Did you hear me? He put his backbone up in there tonight. Yes! Chutzpah. I'm Caitlin. I'm from Boston. I want you all to know that, uh, and I'm going to introduce the singers again to you, that Motown uh, exemplified what we call in African-American philosophy and history, double uh, consciousness. There was always a coded song in the messages. One of the uh, notions of the, me of the music was to entertain, but the more profound message was to survive. And no matter what was thrown at you, you could make it. Name? My name is Malika and from Lexington, Massachusetts. Yeah. My name is Sunny, I'm from California. Yeah. Hello everybody, I'm Stephanie and I'm from the little island of Cyprus. Yeah. Hello again, my name is Perfect Martin and I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm going to say we have a Detroit in the house, and I got a little confused. Uh, but I'm going to have Dr. Lloyd to come up and say something, who's from Detroit, Michigan, and knows so much about Motown and grew up with that and know the players. Come on, Dr. Lloyd. So let's close out with a little statement. This was absolutely incredible. And I'm, I want us to give a round of applause for this yeah. incredible, incredible man. Larry brings out the best of the and everyone, I'm telling you, I just want to say something very, very quickly. One day he asked me if I would take over his Motown class. I have a good voice, but I cannot sing, sadly. But I know a lot of the history of Detroit because I was born in Detroit. My parents were born in Detroit. My grandparents were born in Detroit. And it was a pleasure for me to take over that class because I shared some history with them that I think is very, very important. It was all about, as Larry said, a double consciousness. It was about liberation. Think about Marvin Gaye. Think about the Vandellas, and it was also about bringing people together through the music. And I think Motown has done this. I'm a very proud Detroiter. Thank you. No matter where you go in the world, the greatest ambassador representing the best in America has been the music, and particularly Motown. And so I want to thank all these young people from all over the world uh, who came together put their individual egos aside and collectively came together to do something that was funny. You know what? The way I judge th these young people here at Berkeley is not always on the technical, because we get carried away with the technical. We got the pitch police sitting on the right and, and somebody else sitting on the left. But that you could tell they had fun. You could tell that the music was vibrant and alive. And if musicians cannot embrace the fun, if it's only about the finished product and getting it done, then you've lost the fundamental core part of what this music has meant to the world. The part of the brain that cannot be manipulated is the part where music dwells. When you improvise, and that's why I deliberately break it up sometimes and jump in here, the left side of the brain shuts down and the right side of the brain just flourishes and does what it needs to do. And we all need to be aware of the power of that as we improvise in life. 
Because everything we plan does not always come out the way it was supposed to. And so then we have to know how you get up and kick back in and survive. And so that last song uh, recorded <coughs> many, many years before Diana Ross recorded it, uh, became a hit again because of the power of the message and the music. So we want to thank all of the great artists uh, that oftentimes do not get acknowledged that I want you to know here at Berkeley as long as I'm here and doing this that we're going to sing and play but we're also going to embrace the rich history that has empowered and healed many of us when we didn't go to the doctor and we didn't have a psychiatrist. We had these great songs that told us no one gets the prize. <laughs> no one gets the prize. One written by Valerie Simpson, I Will Survive. The one about touch me in the morning, but you got to go. <laughs> it was nice. Wasn't it me who said that nothing good is going to last forever? Bye-bye, Felicia. <clears throat> I'm Getting Ready for Love is one of the most challenging, difficult songs in the Ross, uh, us, and people don't do it. And so when she first took on the song, I said, no, that ain't working. You got to swing. You know, Duke Ellington said, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And what it meant, it's the same way the Supreme Court said when they asked him to define pornography, they said, you know it when you see it. When you're swinging, you know it when you hear it. Yeah. There's been thousands of dissertations written on swing, and nobody got it right yet because people want to count. Certain things can't be counted, and that's the rich part of the oral tradition. So I thank you all for coming. I hope any students here from Berkeley <laughs> that you will consider joining the next brigade of Motowners in this class or in the Foundation of Singing with Soul. I want to thank both Foundation of Singing with Soul, the opening show, which was absolutely thrilling. And I want to thank all these wonderful players. And I hope you all get home safe. And remember me and remember us, as the song says, on a sunny day that you once had along the way. Good night.